Carmilla. Hey. Some love it, others adore it, and few are left scratching their heads saying, What the what? When the strange and paranormal happens, Laura and the Scooby gang are the ones to call, so move aside, Buffy. This is one broody vampire you can't kill. Well, then everything's all right, and we all get to be not staked through the heart. Good work, team. From Laura and Carm, Mel and the lovable Kirsch, Laugh and Perry, and even the titular Danny, this digital series gave us lovable characterizations and damn near slapstick comedic timing to break tensions. Seriously? But there's one character that eludes us all. Who? Or what exactly is the magical library? I just want to begin stating that these are just theories compiled by evidence of rhetoric and lore from original source materials like the ancient Sumerian poem of Inanna's Descent and are no way official canon of the series. Let me know if you agree or not in the comments down below. So buckle up cream puff, we're gonna be in for a long night. Who or what is the magical space-time anomaly? Let's get a little backstory, shall we? We know what saved JP and Laura from the grasp of Anana. Donna Noble has left the night. Donna Noble has been saved. But it's also a mischievous creature of creation and knowledge. We were given little hints from the beginning about the Dean being an ancient Sumerian goddess while Carmilla would speak of reading Gilgamesh in season one. If you're unfamiliar, Gilgamesh murdered Arishkagal's husband, who would then be the catalyst for Inanna's descent to the underworld, helping her sister grieve. Later in some epic Sumerian poems, depending on which translation you read, Inanna, Lady of the Largest Heart, would find her husband Hastur murdered. Trying to bring him back while her sister grieves is a slap in the face, and she refused to return him to the living. This sent Anana on an epic tirade, eventually bound by four gods for her hubris, two of those gods being her father and sister. But why is this relevant to the library? If you are familiar with ancient Sumerian mythos, you will find that the library is none other than Enki, Anana's father trapped like the Vashna Narada of Doctor Who. The real world is a lie, and your nightmares are real. The library is real. There are people trapped in there. People who need to be saved. The shadows are moving again. Now I know, I know, I know it sounds crazy, but here are some facts. A library is a safe haven of creation and knowledge, but it can be also mischievous. Enki is the Sumerian god of water, knowledge, mischief, and creation. He was originally the patron god of the city of Uridu, which... We would find the kooky owl lady, prophetess of Aridu, would come to temple to worship her god. This could be the library. Laura and friends were sent on a wild goose chase to find four talismans to unbind Inanna and return balance to the natural state of the world, or if they fail, destroy it. Oh, look, this one rhymes. Perfect. Four to make a circle, four to make a cage. The word, the blood, the chalice, and the liar's heart. Presaged. And we know the word is the book, first found by the iconic trio, without even trying. Who else would freely give a talisman of a god's, other than a god himself? Arishkagul gave her locket with little tricks and party games. The prophetess's glasses were given to the trio, leading them through a room full of knives, picking up the book. When you look at the lore, I understand it sounds crazy and like a conspiracy, but it all makes sense. He played his games like he played back with his daughter in ancient texts, but this time he wanted to up the ante. In the text, Anana and Enki, the transfer of arts of civilization from Erido to Uruk, Enki wasn't a very good father. He ultimately played a drinking game with his daughter, Inanna, and lost the bet, handing over the mess, Mesopotamia, but he still loved her dearly, even if she needed to be saved from herself. She started to get drunk with power. This translates to her extreme power trips in the digital series. And then you've got to think about Inanna's crazy scheme to open hell and have her love returned. To open the gates of hell, Inanna needed to sacrifice her high priestess, who she cared for most, but someone else was sacrificed instead of Carmilla, who was 
primed from her brutal murder in Vordenberg's little piece of heaven, which would make the members of Avenged Sevenfold blush. But it's no coincidence that J.P. happened to be in the library in the 1800s sucked into the card catalog until Laura and Laff stumbled upon him, Frankensteining him into a vampire vessel. But before then, J.P. would become Enki's high priest, awakening his full potential and allowing to warn the heroes when Laura came to Silas and started poking her nose in places it doesn't belong. I think whoever wrote this could see the future. How could you possibly know that? Yeah, you, the vampire, and the two dropouts. They were totally able to see the future. She would also add drunken ramblings of Laura and Carm's fate, warning them of the loophole in Laura's sacrifice, only able to be read when the glasses broke. Um, and where death has dominion, the holy fades, or the garden withers, unless the little growly sunbeam says no. 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 This is not how her story ends. Like I always, I always wanted to go to Paris or, or London or, or, or just the world. I just wanted to travel. Enki allowed these to stay. He just didn't want the same mistakes to happen again. Laura was trapped in the library with Carm and Laugh all of season three after the fall of Silas to the Corvée, an ancient, unspeakable force that had the power to take over the world, which forced Laura to see Carmilla as she was. Even in season zero, when the library trapped them in the basement with those creepy home videos. To truly understand that you can't always control what people do. That there are things that are out of your control. To forgive yourself for the things you can't control and to love without expectation, bounds, or limitations. He didn't want to see what happened with Haster and Anana happen again, as Laura is the parallel to Anana before her descent. Carmilla is the jaded and withered parallel to her during. And it's no coincidence that we happen to meet Papa Hollis in season three. Fathers loving daughters so much they sometimes do the wrong things for the right reasons. But with Papa Hollis' is helicopter parenting, which... I will discuss in a later video, Laura could have ended up in million and one different ways. Blasé like Carm, defiant and self-servant like Theo, or a loving do-gooder with a martyr complex. So naturally, Enki brought Sherman Hollis to Laura, confronting one another and learning to let go. It's something that Enki would never get with his daughter, and he was priming Laura for the end. After Laura told Carm, I love you. Why shouldn't that be something good? Anana got loose, causing JP, with the power of the library, to remotely transport Laura to an alt world to really appreciate everything she had done in some sort of It's a Wonderful Life parody with creepy Carmi Kitty holding on her every word. Laura was uncertain. Moments of uncertainty is what causes mistakes and backing out of things that must be done. Looking for Vordenberg's heart, which casted a shroud on her conscience for killing him in the first place, wasn't about finding the heart. It was about finding hers, giving absolute clarity that she knew what must be done. It was a really good testament to love will have its sacrifices. No sacrifice without blood. What I think is the last nail in the coffin and the most bit of fun in the evidence closing the last chapter of the library being Enki is the mischievous banter. I mean, it was rewarding tiny gain Laura for her good and dropping books on Carmilla's head, turning water to blood as an omen that a seal had been broken. It also loves to mess with laugh, taking them to different places like Howl's Moving Castle with the magic door, and allows his other daughter, Arishkigal, using Karm's sister Maddie as a vessel, a parallel to Anana during the descent with her sister, to flow through stone walls, light up dark rooms or dark and light ones, and their persons make their entrances and exits as they please and laugh at locksmiths. That was a quote from the book. I bet he was tickled that Laura chose Scrabble, possibly even messing with Arishkigal, giving Laura all the good letters. All the text and rhetoric just add up. So, do you think Enki is the library? Let me know in the comments down below. Again, this was all just fan theory looking at source materials and coming up with hypotheses. 
I hope you enjoyed this as I make more to come. Also, leave me a comment down below what other Carmilla theories you'd like me to explore. Until next time, my name is Jordan and thanks for watching.